All right, good morning. It is the first day of spring. Woohoo! All right, so normally my videos are delayed a little bit, but today it is going to be as live as I will ever get. You will see it one day after I record. Today is the first day of spring, March 19th. And I am going to be giving an update on what we're doing for the virus, the coronavirus, and how we prepared for it in a small space. So first of all, we are very well aware of the situation. I received some messages and whatnot from some people making sure that we know about it or if we need some place to stay and we are very aware of it. As we traveled through uh, California, we started to notice the uh, toilet paper shortages and then into Arizona, it progressed and we saw, you know, protein, meat and eggs, dairy and started to disappear from the shelf also. Uh, so, number one, we are in a safe location. We are no longer on public land. We are on private land where I have an unlimited amount of time that I can stay here if needed. I have access to electricity and well water. Uh, grocery stores are very close by for when they do have stuff, but we did stock up as best as we can in our van with uh, no freezer and a small fridge and limited storage. So this video is jumped ahead in the timeline and we are hiding in the mountains of New Mexico for the duration of this virus until we feel it is safe to venture back out or travel some more. And we are going to be staying on this piece of property only, maybe going out to the grocery store one time. And I have a package that I'm supposed to pick up when it arrives. If they allow that, I will get that. There is a little bit of iffiness of what you can do and what you can't do, what's going to be open and what's not going to be open. It is changing rapidly. So we pretty much have been self-quarantined to this property for the almost the week and we will continue to stay here. All right, number two, we had to try to get more food, try to store up, stock up on stuff. And it is very hard when you don't have a freezer, you have a very small refrigerator and limited storage. So I'm gonna take you through what we bought and what was left that we could buy that was different than everybody else. All right, so uh, just a little bit of humor. Do you know how many rolls of toilet paper we have stored up in this van? Zero. We haven't seen any toilet paper in weeks. We are down to two boxes of Kleenex and a half of a box of Kleenex, and we are down to half of a roll of paper towels. I haven't seen any. I've maybe been to four or five stores in the last several weeks, I'm not like going to every single one trying to get it desperately. I'm just like, oh, well, I guess it's not here. We'll move on. We'll just keep using Kleenex. But just thought that was funny. We actually don't have any toilet paper already, but we do have a few paper products and I'm already looking at alternatives like rags if uh, we get to that. But anyway, when we went to the stores and what was left that we could buy that stored well without a freezer, um, Here's what we were able to find. All right, so now you remember that Adele and I don't eat wheat and some other grains, sometimes uh, soy we avoid, and a yeast I have to avoid, a few other things. So we are not stocking up on pasta, bread, or peanut butter and jelly, or frozen pizzas, or <laughs> anything like that. Those will not work for us. So what we found when we were in the store, and I did not record actual footage in the store because of, uh, I was wearing gardening gloves when I was in the grocery stores, and I didn't want to touch my phone and take my gloves off and, and mess with that. So um, what we found, first of all, was root crops. Um, we bought butternut squash, acorn squash, uh, sweet potatoes, Maybe we bought several bunches of radishes. I removed the foliage from the radishes and they store a little bit longer. Um, I forgot one other root crop that I didn't mention, which was like a yucca root. It's kind of a more starchy kind of vegetable. We got that just as like a potato chip substitute. 
We don't eat a whole lot of potatoes, but I do have one small bag of potatoes as like a very last resort. We maybe eat potatoes once a month. So the root crops were a nice savior for us, and there they were left. I did buy some avocados, some really green ones, so I could keep those in the fridge, and they will stay good for a couple weeks, and you can take them out as needed. Um, we did buy the vacuum-sealed grass-fed beef packages, those will stay good uh, because they're vacu like sealed up for quite a while. And uh, we found that if we keep them kind of in the middle area of our fridge, they're almost frozen. I try to keep the temperature really close and those will stay good for us for weeks. Another thing that was still left on the shelf was like chicken broth and bone broth, but in the uh, Terra Pack like things, not in cans. I ha can't have yeast, so I have to look through all the ingredients, and almost all of them have yeast extract, except for the more expensive organic ones, and those were all the ones that were left. Bone chicken broth and bone broth from chicken stock, and uh, those, like I said, that was, that was left. So we bought those, and those don't need any refrigeration. They're shelf-stable. Uh, for some of our sweets, we did buy... Uh, some bags of soy-free chocolate chips. We like the Enjoy Life brand, and uh, those obviously don't need a refrigeration. We... All right, there wasn't any canned vegetables left, really. We did buy, I think, three cans of vegetables. That is all I have. Uh, no canned beans were left. Uh, the only thing I was able to find was some yellow... Uh, mung dal beans and that like an Indian food and those are very high in protein and don't need uh, like a dried bean needs to be cooked forever these are ready in like 20 minutes they just need to be rinsed and like I said high in protein and iron so that is going to be kind of one of our main protein things eggs were also very scarce I was able to get one dozen of eggs and so we will have to use those sparingly we got some quinoa that we can mix in with vegetables or soups or stews. All right, some backup sources of protein as we did get several things of sardines. Adele likes these meat sticks. She got a few of these for emergency. All right, so our plan is kind of to eat the fresh vegetables that we bought in conjunction with whatever protein we're able to find. Um, that would be like our broccoli or cauliflower and uh, then you get into more like carrots that last a little bit longer, radishes that last longer, and then your root crops we would eat more like in the second week or third week. And at last resort would be some canned vegetables, and then wild foraging would be much more beneficial, starting to warm up, and there's dandelion greens and quite a few other things that we probably could forage if we were that desperate in week three if we can't get any groceries. Our fridge is pretty packed. There's some of our radishes. We've got a little bit of asparagus that we're going to eat first because that doesn't last. A little bit of dairy in here. We've got some grass-fed hot dogs in there. That's a little bit of our beef. Packages of cheese. And some of them we're probably not going to open for a while. And uh, I did get a little bit of half and half. Some ricotta cheese. Um... I couldn't find the all the... This is like a crushed ginger, but I'd rather have the regular ginger. We just got a few bars and stuff like that. This one has peanut butter and jelly and oats and stuff. Um, this is maybe like a once in a week... Once a week thing. Adele has some gluten-free pretzels that she likes. And I uh, found a few oat um, cookies that aren't too bad. Those are our sweet things that are gluten-free. You can see here she's got some like bunny, bunny fruit snacks, and uh, you know everything is sh shelf stable. Got a few, few chips and snacks over here to tide us over. We also do have some pork rinds for absolute backup. This isn't always the healthiest because it's commercial pork and stuff, so I don't eat this very often, but this would be a, a last resort kind of thing. 
All right, a few other things like for fats besides the avocados, I got ghee, which doesn't need refrigeration. And I got a good quality olive oil for my fats. We're going to be eating a lot of stews and soups and stuff like that for uh, the chicken broth and bone broth and using our root crops to make a nice stew or soup. Some fruits that we have, we bought bags of apples and oranges. Those don't need a whole lot of refrigeration and tend to stay good for a long time. We didn't buy any bananas or anything like that. I think I got um, a container full of kiwis because they take forever to ripen usually. And then raisins and dates and figs, they stay good for a long time and don't need any refrigeration. We like to maybe cook the apples up and put maybe raisins or dates, a little bit of ghee, and maple syrup and that could be almost like a breakfast. Uh, as far as our grains, we do have some corn products like um, some corn chips, um, maybe some stuff if we'd wanted to make tortillas, we have that. And um, But we don't have any wheat flour. I don't really have any sugar. I noticed all the, the wheat flour and all the sugar was gone in the store and I don't use either one of those. I did get some cassava root flour, so I could make maybe like a pancake kind of thing for breakfast stuff. Like I said, the sugar was all gone. I don't use sugar, so we have one thing of honey and one thing of maple syrup for our sweeteners, and that'll last us um, weeks. Let's see, some other little things like ginger. We make some tea, we got some lemons, we got some limes. Those stay good for a long time. Let me think what else. Mmm, got some natural dyed M&M's. Mmm. Go tell Adele I'm eating them. These are hers, too. The honey mints. All right, so I'm recording here, and I don't know if you can see in between those two houses, there is mule deer over there grazing. They kind of blend in with the color of the wood. And uh, see the antlers. You might be able to see them moving in between right to the here and there's another one coming around yeah they're pretty much here all the time I think the cat finally sees him do you see him dusty you see those big things I think he does see him he's up in the dash looking I go yeah I want to get me one of them what are those All right, thanks for watching our update on how we prepared for this virus in our van. And make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already.